And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Good morning. It is so wonderful to see you all this morning and to have you here as we celebrate this second Sunday of Advent. We invite you to continue worshiping with us over the next few Sundays and for our service of Lessons and Carols on Christmas Eve, which will be at 5 o'clock. We look forward to anticipating and expecting together the birth of our Lord Jesus. So please join us uh, in, in these weeks to come and be our guest if you are visiting today. We are so glad to have you with us. Thank you for joining us, blessing us with your presence. Be our guest for lunch, which we have every week following the worship service. We would love to talk with you, get to know you a little bit more, and share with you what Second Presbyterian is doing. We are doing a lot this week. There are several events coming up. Um, Wednesday night, the Presbyterian women are hosting dinner for us. The Bounce House will be open at 5.30 for children. Well, I say children. I mean, anybody can use it if you want to. And uh, if you would like to bring a covered dish, that would be great. Or if you would like to just bring a donation, that would also be appreciated. But this will be a time of uh, good food and fellowship together. So that will be Wednesday, starting at 5.30. And then you'll also see in the bulletin Thursday evening at 7.30, uh, our choral arts group who rehearses here at Second Pres will be giving a concert that evening, Thursday evening. There are tickets out by the church office that they have donated for us. So please feel free to help yourself to those and come Thursday night. Uh, it, it will truly be a, a beautiful concert, I know. Saturday, the Second Outdoors group of Second Press will be meeting at, uh, is it Bebaz? Is that how you pronounce the restaurant? Um, so uh, that will be happening Saturday. And then next Sunday, we will again have worship and lunch. And the session and deacons, both uh, current and those outgoing and those incoming, uh, are invited to uh, meet together. We will have our joint meeting, and uh, we're going to be doing that after lunch over at St. Paul's. Uh, we've reserved a room over there so that we can gather just kind of in a different place uh, to be together. So that'll be next Sunday also. You'll see a little form there in your bulletin for poinsettias taking money for those uh, through the 12th, I believe. So if you'd like to give a poinsettia in memory or in honor of someone, you can do that. And also just want to let you know that starting next Sunday, we will be taking the Christmas Joy offering. That is one of our denominational offerings. And um, they've sent us this year boxes for the children. Um, you probably know the One Great Hour Sharing offering has those fish boxes. Well, this Christmas Joy offering has also now sent boxes so that the children can uh, collect uh, some funds for that. So I think that's really special. We can all participate. So wonderful time of year uh, to be here, to be together. Are there any other announcements for us this morning? Well, again, welcome to each and every one of you. Let us worship God.
This is the season of holy waiting. We wait for the day when our spirits will rejoice to know God's favor. We want This piece is entitled Love. As this season of sparkle and bright unfolds around us, the welcome beauty of love is found, woven into the simplicity of every moment. May love flow from our hearts with abundance, filling every moment with the season's gifts of hope and peace and joy. May it be shared truly and deeply that all who encounter it be charged with its message and become themselves the agents of love. And may our children who love without reckoning teach us the truth of this most precious gift. We are nothing without each other. Let us live then in the blessing of love. Let us pray. Gracious God, this is the season of holy waiting. Help us to watch for the one who scatters the proud and lifts up the lowly. Help us to wait for the child who is love. Amen. May love light the world this Christmas.
At this time of year, we are especially aware of why God needed to send Jesus into this world. For we had all fallen so short of God's glory, rebellious, turning away from God to do our own thing, and we know that that continues even today. We do that as individuals, we do that as a body, and because we trust God to forgive us, we go to God with our confession. Let us join together. Gracious God, you announce your coming with exciting news. The hungry will eat their fill. The oppressed will dance in newfound freedom. The powerful will lose their status. Help us accept and proclaim the coming of your Son as truly good news for all people. Give us the courage to see our privilege and set it aside. Help us create a world where everyone can sing together for joy. Let us continue our confession in silence. Amen. Mary declared that his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel in Jesus Christ. We are forgiven. Old Testament reading this morning is from Isaiah chapter 61 verses 1 through 3 and 10 through 11. You can find it in the Pew Bible on page 650 in the Old Testament. It's the good news of deliverance. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit, they will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself with a garland, or excuse me, with jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord will, God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. This is the word of the Lord.
the children please come up this morning. Come and look at our nativity scene, yeah, and bring that. Because um, I, I wondered if you knew which person up here is Mary. Which one is Mary up here? Okay, there's Mary, and who was she? Um, Jesus' mom. Jesus' mom, okay. And did Jesus have a dad? Joseph. Joseph, okay, yes. And so... Today, we're going to talk about how the angel came and told Mary that she was going to have a baby, and then Joseph wasn't so sure that he wanted to go ahead and marry her, and so how did they happen to go ahead and get together? So um, you all learned about that today, didn't you, Vincent? Yeah? Yeah. Didn't you learn about how how did Joseph know to go ahead, Vincent? The angel came to him in his sleep and told him to go ahead and marry her. And Dexter, you you drew a picture of what was in Joseph's dream. And and what's what's in there? Wait just a second. Come here, Dex. Come here. What what's in his dream? What did you draw a picture of? Um, I drew Joseph, and I drew an angel. Okay. You drew an angel, and is he, is he saying something to Joseph, that mm-hmm. angel? What did the angel say? Uh, you don't have to be afraid. Uh, hold on. That's right. You don't have to be afraid to take Mary as your wife. And, and, and did Joseph say, okay then? Was it okay for Joseph to do? Wow, wow. So God spoke to Joseph in a dream. And Joseph and Mary, an angel, spoke to Joseph in a dream. You're right, it was an angel. And Joseph knew then it was okay to go ahead and take Mary And then, many months later, Mary had a baby named Jesus. Wow. What a story. Isn't that wonderful? So sometimes God even speaks to us in our dreams, doesn't God? And Joseph trusted that, and he and Mary became the parents of Jesus. Wow. We're going to talk about Mary some more today. And that is just a wonderful story. Thank you so much for sharing this and for uh, Diane and Emily talking with our kids about this wonderful story that we believe. I'm going to leave this up here if that's okay. Let's, let's go ahead and have a prayer together. Oh, okay. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. Want to hold hands? Let's hold hands. God, we thank you so much. Thank you for Mary. Thank you for Joseph. Thank you for the way that you spoke to both of them, that they might know that your plan was for good for us and for them, that they had the courage to step out in faith and trust you and your word. Help us, Lord, to trust you when you speak to us, Help us, too, to step out in faith, to be the people you want us to be, for Jesus' sake. Amen. Amen. Okay, thank you so much. It's a great story. Thank you. Do you want to leave it here? Sure. Thank you very much.
Yes, for those of you visiting, we have music that beautiful every Sunday. We look forward to having our youth choir. I believe they're singing next Sunday. Rick Rushworth and Deborah Nublet have been working with them, and they have a beautiful piece for us. Matt and Leon, Leon Carbone will be playing for us. Zach Tyler uh, is with us this morning. Uh, there is beautiful music here every Sunday. We invite you to join us. And I do want to um, embarrass a couple of folks by just calling attention to them. Alan Payne is visiting with us this morning. He is our Presbytery liaison with our uh, pastor nominating committee. They are meeting today, so he is here uh, to meet with them. Welcome. It's great to have you here again. And um, if you didn't get a chance to rub in the fact that Lyle is 30, uh, <laughs> it's not too late. And uh, so please wish him happy birthday. Uh, they've had a wonderful weekend. Uh, Emily's parents are here with them. And uh, so we definitely want to say happy birthday to Lyle. Uh, always great when we can celebrate special events together. Don't hesitate to let us know what's going on with you. Oh, excuse me. You know, um, <clears throat> so let us turn our attention again uh, to Scripture as we look at Mary's song from the first chapter of Luke, beginning with the 39th verse. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. This is after the angel has visited Mary. And when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me? that the mother of my Lord comes to me. For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord. And my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. What do we think of when we hear 
her name, Mary. She conjures up images of a young woman with a light blue mantle, sometimes a white veil, usually holding the baby Jesus with her head bowed toward him. She's been sung about, written about by authors and poets, and she's been the subject of artists and musicians throughout the centuries. She is referred to as the Virgin Mary in the Apostles' Creed, Mary full of grace in Catholic prayers, and Mother Mary by the Beatles. She's known as the Mother of God, Queen of Heaven, Our Lady of Guadalupe, and Our Lady of Fatima, whose legend was made into a movie that fascinated me as a child. Mary is thought to be meek and mild. She is venerated in part because of the humility and obedience with which she accepted the announcement of her soon-to-be pregnancy. She's also venerated as refuge and advocate for sinners, protector from dangers, and a powerful intercessor. One of the components of the Catholic veneration of Mary is the focus on her participation in the process of salvation, bringing Jesus into the world, and redemption, seeing him through his death. Most discussions about Mary have focused on her virginity. And the fascination with virginity continues in Afghanistan and now some other countries, families are bringing their unmarried daughters to clinics and hospitals for virginity tests. The test is administered to determine whether the girl can get married or get a job or go to school. If she fails, she is sent to prison. The obsession with Mary's purity grew into the thinking that Mary was born untainted by even original sin, consequently making the conception and her immaculate. Mary is mentioned sporadically throughout the Gospels at the Annunciation, her visit to Elizabeth, where we're given today's song, at Jesus' birth, at the temple presentation of Jesus, where she met Simeon and Anna, at the Magi's visit and subsequent flight into Egypt, the Passover in Jerusalem, where Jesus was 12 and she thought she had lost him, the wedding at Cana, the attempt to see Jesus while he was teaching when Jesus responded, who are my mother and brothers? We know Mary was at the cross with the beloved disciple and probably at his trial. And Mary remained with the disciples who were praying in an upper room before Pentecost. She figures a lot in the gospel accounts of Jesus' life and ministry and death. And when we listen to the words of Mary's Magnificat, we hear another aspect of who Mary is. She is a prophet, a visionary, and we think, Mary, mother of Jesus, 
partner and mate of God? How did you sing this song? You were troubled when the angel greeted you and addressed you as favored one. You couldn't imagine why you would receive such a salutation. Probably a teenager, when you were visited by the angel Gabriel, betrothed to a man who could have had you killed for becoming pregnant apart from him, living in a period of history that had a madman, Herod the Great, on the throne? How did you find the capacity to rejoice? Yet your song is about blessing. Your song is about hope. Your song names the vision of what God is doing in you and for the world. It takes courage to hope in the midst of danger and death. It takes courage to defy one's surroundings and one's difficult circumstances to hope for something better. Mary could have said no. She could have bolted her door and told the angel, the risk is just too great. Carrying a child that was not her betrothed, carrying a child who would challenge Herod, carrying a child who would not be welcome as Messiah, Mary could have declined. Perhaps Mary was not the first one propositioned by God. But Mary was the one who said yes. She saw that God was doing a new and a great thing. What a complex person Mary turns out to be. And then in reading about the theology of Mary, I noted a sentence that brought my understanding of Mary into the light. I read, her role as mother takes precedence over any of the other roles assigned to her in devotion and dogma. Her role as mother. My mother was an only child. I don't know how many miscarriages her mother had. My grandmother, my mother's mother, was Maddie Bertwistle. And if you asked her how to spell her last name, she would say B-I-R-T My family moved from New Jersey to Pennsylvania when my father was asked to become president of Waynesburg College, his alma mater. Waynesburg University, as it is now, is a Presbyterian-related college who graduated the first women in the state of Pennsylvania in 1857. When my father was to be inaugurated, my grandmother came out for the occasion. And while there, unfortunately, she fell and broke her hip. A nurse who went into her hospital room said, Mrs. Bertwistle, how did you come to fall? My grandmother quickly responded, I didn't come to fall, I came to the inauguration. <laughs> These are my genes. <laughs> my 
women, history, divine interventions. God chose Mary first and foremost to be the mother of God's only son. After all, what are mothers about? They are humble. They are obedient. They always put their child first. They listen for God's guidance and direction. They are a refuge when the child is hurting and scared. They protect when the child is in danger. They encourage, support, teach, play, laugh, and cry, and love. More than they love their own lives. They hope and dream and envision what that child will become. And all of that is because a mother and child are joined physically for a time, spiritually joined forever. Joseph, too, made a contribution, as all fathers do. I'm not meaning to slight fathers. Fathers are equally important. And we'll be looking at Zechariah, John's father, next week. But we don't know as much about Joseph. His last sighting in the gospel is when Jesus is 12. Mary was present throughout Jesus' life. Mary saw beyond her situation to what God was doing in her and through her and in her son for the world. Was Jesus brilliant? Did Jesus know his Hebrew faith and the words of the Old Testament? Did Jesus demonstrate acceptance of everyone and exhibit the deepest compassion and obedience. Did Jesus see what the future held? Yes. And by virtue of being the Son of God, Jesus had special powers and innate abilities. But he also learned all of that from his mother. Mary said yes without knowing what God would do. Mary didn't know what bearing God would entail. We think that her saying yes to God was a one-time event that took place at the Annunciation. But in reality, Mary had to continue choosing to say yes to God throughout her lifetime. Yes, when an old man told her at Jesus' dedication that her own heart would be pierced. Yes, when Jesus was not understood being about his father's business. Yes, when her husband and partner in the situation died. Mary continued to say yes to God when circumstances for Jesus changed. When her son was tried and convicted on false charges. When he was whipped and beaten. When he carried the cross and eventually died a torturous death. And now it's our turn. We are being asked to say yes without knowing where God will lead us or what God will do. We are being asked to trust that God will again 
bring down the powerful and lift up the lowly. Faith in God asks that we say yes in times of rejoicing, in times of excruciating pain, and in all of our life's events. Mary's yes was an example for her son, and it is a model of the sacred gift of motherhood that is meant for all of us. Meister Eckhart, German theologian and mystic, said, What good is it to us if the eternal birth of the Divine Son takes place year after year, but does not take place within myself? And what good is it to me if Mary is full of grace, if I am not also full of grace? What good is it to me for the Creator to give birth to a son, if I do not also give birth to him in my time and place? May we choose today to carry the Christ child within us, that our being might be an expression of God for us. Yes? Shall we pray? God, there are so many moments in our life when we don't know what you are doing, when we do not understand your ways. We would like to ask you, but sometimes that asking is met with silence. So we pray for the strength to continue trusting where we do not see. We know that you have a plan for us, a plan for each one of us, a plan for this body of believers. And we pray, God, that you will reveal that to us every day. There are still so many lowly as we look around the world, Lord. There are still so many rich and powerful. There are still so many hurting and angry. And God, we again wonder where you are. Give us the courage to be bearers of you, to carry you into our everyday to let people see the light within us, the life within us that is you. And help us to do that together as we pray the prayer your Son taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Let us now say yes to God with our offering.
Gracious God, thank you. Thank you for all of your gifts and all of the ways those gifts are exhibited. May we use those as a witness in our lives and in our world for Jesus' sake. Amen. Continue to magnify the Lord as we say yes to God's activity in our lives. And may the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ our Lord, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forever. Amen.
Beatles. Yeah. Okay. So I got that in a pile of French paper. Right. Got Don Smith the email.